Welcome to Workout 3 and 4, week 2 of the Summer Throwdown. My name is Ed Haynes and joining me today in the studio is... Scott Clean or Shark Vulsion. Or just villain. Or just villain. Um, so we're about to watch Skulk and Andrew do this workout. But before we get into that, let's announce what the workout actually is. We have a two-part workout once again. For those in the live program, you will start by building to three low hang cleans within a seven minute window. That means three unbroken reps of a hang clean that starts from below the knee. You'll have three minutes rest after that, then you will start a nine minute AMRAP where you will buy in with 100 single crossovers, followed by three wall walks and three front squats. You will then go back to do three wall walks and the front squats will increase to six, three, nine, three, 12, so on and so forth. So in part two of the workout, the buy-in is the crossovers. In the remaining time, you complete as many reps and rounds as possible of your wall walks and front squats. For our perform, compete, and elite uh, competitions, very similar idea. Part one or workout three will be seven minutes to build to a low hang snatch. Any variation of snatch is acceptable here. And then part two of this workout after three minute rest will be a nine minute AMRAP. You'll buy in with a hundred single crossovers. Uh, and then you'll move into as many reps and rounds as possible in the remaining time, starting with three wall walks and then three, six, nine, 12 front squats at the respective weights. Scott, did I miss anything? No, nope, got it, nailed it. Okay, what we're gonna do now, we're about to watch two of our coaches, Skulky Boy over here and Andre Lowe throw down in this workout. What we're gonna do is talk you through the workout and of course, Skulky, I'll be interviewing you to see what you're thinking. Three, two, one, we're underway. So, I think the first thing to say here is that these guys were basically instructed that they had to do this workout. There wasn't a whole amount of choice here. Uh, but let me ask you, Scott, what were your feelings going into this workout? Um, I was a little bit stressed actually going against Andrew, um, especially I'm not the most comfortable with a barbell in my hand. Um, we spoke a little bit before and me and Lou about what he's gonna try hit, and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I barely hit the weights. He, you gave on a good day just from the floor um, so I was just I don't know just hoping for the best action going into it um, wall walks and front squats isn't actually a combination that I've done before actually so I have no idea what that's gonna feel like so yeah I just, just went with it to see. I mean you look up. this is the most fired up I think I've ever seen you for a workout mm. talk me through that um, yeah I don't, I don't know I mean we so me and Andrew I think it was last year summer third and we also had a, a max snatch and I think a small rivalry started back then. Um, as I said, Andrew's quite good at the barbell, or quite good with the barbell. Um, I outsnatched him last year, which was under fatigue. Um, and this year, he, he made the call beforehand saying, well, it's not under fatigue this year, so he's gonna get me. And I was like, well, better do whatever I can to not, not let that go, so. So let's talk about strategy here. We've got seven minutes and you've got to build to a triple. Mm. Now you guys are both in the compete elite category. We know for our live crew, they're gonna be doing cleans. Um, so just a couple of things you guys have to remember is that very first rep, you must stand all the way up first and then you must lower that bar to below the knee. Really important, you're not making the mistake of lowering above the knee because mm. you're gonna waste the energy on a rep. Um, so you have essentially have as many opportunities as you want within that seven minutes. You can also, for a warm-up set, not necessarily do three. You could just do a single and build and build and build. But what were you? What were your thoughts on this goal? Uh, yeah, so I think exactly what you mentioned. Now I actually didn't build to a three rep panic snatch at all in the warm-ups. I think I just went 50, 60, and I finished on 70, um, just for a single. 70 felt fine. So I started on 60 for three. Then I think we went 70, and then from there onwards, it was just me looking at Andrew's bar and just trying to stay as close to him as possible and hoping for the best. Did you, did you have a target weight in mind? I honestly had no idea what I was going to hit. As I said, I barely can snatch 90 for a single on a good day. Um, so I knew somewhere around 80. I was hesitant that anything above 80 would go up. Um, so somewhere around that mark, I would have been happy with. How many sets did you end up doing within the seven minutes? So we right now, I think you, you started at 60, you opened at 60. Yeah. So you just hit a set at 70? Yeah, I think I did four, four in total. Okay, cool. Uh, were you looking at the clock this whole time? Were you just going by feel? I was just going by feel. Um, I think I rested quite, my rest between my 60 and my 70 was basically nothing. I just did 60, put the plates on, put 70 on and went straight away. Rested quite a long between, I think my third and my fourth attempt, just so I can see what Andrew was doing as well. Seeing if he was gonna make that lift and then 
obviously have to jump a little bit higher. So. Yeah, so I think something to think about because the workout begins with the snatch. Uh, and you know, if you're doing this workout in your own time, what I'd be doing in my warm up, pretty much what you did, I'd be just building up to the weight that I want to start at straight away. Now yeah. you could actually kind of build up to a heavier load and kind of just start this workout at a pretty tough load. Now, obviously you want to get a banker in, yeah. so something you know you can hit, but you can take as long as you want warming up, open up with a heavier lift, and then you know potentially just leave enough time to do one to two more sets. Yeah. But I think, you know, if you're like you, Scott, where you don't really have a goal and you're just gonna see kind of like in the moment what you'd be able to hit, yeah. well then of course you've got to give yourself a bit more time to potentially do more sets. Yeah. I think someone else I would think about as well is if you are a stronger athlete, um, you've probably got less opportunity to do more sets because if you're doing lots of consecutive heavy sets, mm. um, you're just gonna fatigue really yeah. fast. So if you're someone where maybe skill or mobility is kind of more of a limiter in your snatch, you can probably afford to do more sets and yeah. it actually might be, might be a good thing to grease the groove. Yeah, yeah I think that's probably where I'm sitting at where I think technique is probably one of the main, main things that's limiting me in my snatch. So as you said, I mean, 83 kilos, I mean, it's, although it's heavy for me, it doesn't tax my body that much. Uh, because it's just technique issues that I've got at the moment, so I can afford to take a few more, a few more sets in the set of minutes. And I noticed that you're doing power snatches. Is that something that you committed to doing from the start? <laughs> I mean, true. they look really like really good power snatches, but um, to be honest, like every time I snatch, it feels somewhere between a power and a squat. I don't feel that comfortable going down into a squat snatch. Like if you have to ask me to just squat snatch a single at the weight that I hit for the last one, I probably would fail. Um, I'm a bit more comfortable high powering or low power snatching that heavy bar. So that's the only, any reason for that. Yeah. So you're going up 10 kg jumps. So you're moving up to 80 now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think watching Andrew as well, you know, Andrew's quite a technically good lifter, yeah. uh, but I think Andrew just hit 81 um, and it wasn't the most solid triple that I've ever seen him do. Yeah. So what we're seeing here is that Skulk's going for bigger jumps, 10 kg jumps because your reps are solid. Uh, Andrew has gone from, I believe he opened at 70 or 75 81 now he's moving to 83 yeah. so yeah andrew's kind of doing more consecutive heavy sets which are going to take a bigger toll mm. on the body but i think maybe that might be linked to the fact that his 81 didn't look that yeah. clean yeah yeah i think there you can see me i put on 80 on the bar and i saw andrew have 83 i was like i'm not sure if i'm gonna make 83 if i put this on and then just so this is a risk lift yeah. for you like there's nothing yeah. In your head, you're thinking, okay, there's no, no. Guarantee. I mean, the heaviest I've snatched off the floor for a single is just 87. Um, so, as I said, like we didn't do a whole bunch of low angle stuff, so I have no reference point as to what this is going to feel like if I actually do it. Um, I just thought if I can try and match Andrew at least. I, I didn't think there was enough time on the clock for us both to go again. I think this was going to be the last one. So Andrew, Andrew just failed his first attempt at 83. What are you thinking here? Um, you look like you've got a open door. Open door. Spring in your step. Open door. Yeah. yeah. Take a few seconds, um, tighten the belt up a little more. Alex is well on the corner here, just giving me shit for the entire seven minutes. So I just added a bit of fuel, fuel up the fire as well. Okay, so let's see where we're at. So we're kind of coming up to the final minute, less than a minute, about 45 seconds, I believe, left on the clock. So uh, Lou is going for a second attempt at 83. In his first attempt, he hits that very nicely. So obviously now time is ticking. We're probably coming into our final 30 seconds here. Mm. Uh, and I think it's really important to note that to complete this complex, so Andrew misses his second rep. Uh, mm. If you, you look at the entire time it takes to complete this complex, you might be looking at close to kind of 20, yeah. 25 That's seconds. So you need to just bear that in mind. Um, both of you guys are kind of readjusting at the hip before you go into your next repetition. Oh, and he likes that. Yes. He <laughs> likes that and Andrew doesn't. So. Basically, these guys finished um, on the dot. You basically yeah. finished with kind of like a second or two to go. Uh, you now have a three minute rest period. Now, it's really important that you guys are having to change your bars now. So you got to make those load adjustments on that same barbell, bring that barbell into frame uh, so that it can be picked up on your camera. Uh, you'll see that they have their two lines measured out. Uh, one line is going to be, or two lines are gonna be for the wall walks, and the other line is where the barbell has to be on the other side of. Mm. Uh, so we're about to see these guys go into part two of this workout, which is going to start with 100 single unders as a buy-in, crossovers. crossovers, thank you. Once that has been completed, in the remaining time of the nine minutes, you're gonna be moving between wall walks and front squats. It begins with the wall walk, three repetitions, followed by three front squats, back to three wall walks, and then the front squats will increase by three every round. So tell me, Skulk, what are your thoughts on this next part of the workout? Um, again, 
with, I think the time domain is quite short, it's just nine minutes. Um, if you compare my one rep max to the 70 kilo bar, I get the percentage is quite high. If I compare myself to somebody like Andrew, um, he's also the king of crossovers, as we all know. Um, I've been practicing them a little bit, but I just tried to just hold on there as much as I could. I knew the only place I could probably make up time is on my wall walks. So if I could get there before him and just try to maintain whatever pace I was holding there, I think that was my only way of actually winning this because he's, as I said, a bit more efficient with the barbell. He's quite, he's very good at wall walks as well. So um, just had to, had to play that game a little bit of trying to get in front and just, just stay there for the nine minutes. Well, I mean, we're about to see you, um, we're about to see this kick off in just over a minute. Mm. What are you feeling you know, in this transition period in three minutes. And what are you thinking about now before this next workout starts? Um, I think coming off the snatch, obviously quite a bit of quite a bit of confidence as well. Um, I think it was last year when we had the quarterfinals, we had the first time we obviously saw crossovers. Um, and that was quite a, I think that's the first workout where actually I basically pulled out and I was like, I'm not doing this. Um, and that was, at the time I was like, this is a feeling that I don't want to feel again. Um, so I put in quite a bit of effort into like these small little things like crossovers, stuff like that. Um, so I think just coming off the back of the snatch, just the confidence I got there. Um, did crossovers obviously before this, I think a week before as well, we did quite a big workout where there was over 100 crossovers and that felt quite comfortable. Um, so not really stressed about it. Um, as I said, I had no idea what this is gonna feel like because we never actually did the, did the pairing of a wall walk in the front squat, so yeah. I think something to think about is, you know, when you have a max lift into like an endurance piece, is that typically after a max lift, like heart rate is high, yeah. adrenaline is up, we can be really fired up. And sometimes if you're too fired up going into like a nine minute AMRAP, especially with something like a, a crossover, which is a high accuracy piece, that can kind of bite you in the ass a little yeah. bit. So I think it's really important, um, you know, in this three minute transition, bring your heart rate back down, mm. you know, try be like cool, calm and collected because this is not a sprint workout, right? Yeah. This is something you're just gonna chip away at yeah. and you've got to keep heart rate down because there is a lot of opportunities for bottlenecks in this workout, especially in the front squats. Uh, as those front squats get higher, um, or the, the rep scheme goes up, you know, there could be potential for, you know, if you go out too hard, too fast, yeah. um, to bite you in the ass. Yeah. yeah, I think if we just look at the actual crossovers, I think before we started, I was quite calm and collected, but if you just look at the actual way we are skipping, and there's a lot more smooth with the actual ropes. I think he, he probably felt a lot better coming off them. Yeah. Um, going into his first set of wall walks, I'm a little bit more aggressive to my shoulders and jumping a little bit more inefficiently. Yeah, so you're seeing with Andrew, every single jump on the on the regular single and the crossover, the, the jump is exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, whereas you are having a bit of a bigger jump as the rope crosses over. Yeah. So in terms of time there, so it's about a minute to complete the 100 crossovers. That's mm -hmm. if you do them unbroken, which yeah. you both did. Yeah. So really what that's meaning, you got eight minutes now to work through this nasty combination of a wall walk and an ascending front squat. Yeah. So we're gonna, as we get into this front squat, I'd like to know Skull, like how did this feel? You know, knowing that coming into this workout, you didn't know how it's gonna feel. Did you warm up the combination? Um, yeah, beforehand I went through um, just one round, actually, um, a full round of, I think it was three walks and then into six squats just to see how it feels to get underneath the barbell. I didn't actually want to warm up any more than that. I didn't want to fatigue my legs at all um, before going in. Um, yeah, I started off quite quick on the wall walks, maybe looking back now, maybe a little bit too fast. Mm. Um, I think going why, in... Sorry, why do you think you went too fast? Um, just how it ended up. Mm. <laughs> like just the, just the pace dropped off quite a bit. Um, I think one thing that I was thinking going in is um, my heart rate's probably going to go, but that wasn't the case at all. It was just midline was the main thing that actually actually blew up. Because um, if you could take a look at how I'm holding my bar, it's actually not in a proper front rack. It's actually arms across just to save the shoulders a tiny bit. So that made it made a big difference. Um, yeah, and just as the rep schemes just went on, the legs just fatigued. Because I mean, wall walks took us about 25, 30 seconds each time. So you spend the majority of your nine minutes basically just front squatting a seven kilo bar um, and that adds up quite quickly. Yeah, I think something to think about is when you have an ascending ladder and the other movement is not ascending, mm -hmm. is at the start of this workout, um, you know, when you've got three wall walks, three front squats, three wall walks, six front squats, three wall walks, yeah. the time between wall walks is really short. But then as the reps start to go up on the front squat, your time between wall walks will actually start to get longer. Yeah. And so I think actually you can probably start your wall walks, especially in the first round, a little quicker. Yeah. Um, but like you said, 
the actual fatigue in this workout comes from the fact that there's a lot of bracing. Yeah. Right? You need to brace hard in the front squat. That's pretty impressive what you just did there. Yeah, that was that. I don't know what happened in my, in my head there. I don't know what happened. You basically cleaned and caught in the cross, cross. position. Um, so yeah, you know, naturally like attrition is going to start to come in at some point. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you, both you and Andrew, well, you started with a squat clean and then your second set of front squats, you started with a power clean, then changed your arms. Yeah. What, what's, the, what's the reasoning? What do you think? Um, again, just same with, same with my snatch as well. I don't feel that comfortable catching in a, in a, in a squat. Um, so I'd much rather stand it up, make sure I'm in a good position before I start going down. Yeah. Losing a bit of time, they're obviously doing, doing that, uh, but I'd rather do that instead of squatting and then yeah. dropping the bar and taking another 10 seconds to get the bar back up again. So I think something we're, we're also seeing here in the difference between in the cadence between you yeah. and Andrew is that you perform a squat, give yourself a second to pause on top of each rep, mm. whereas Andrew is kind of up, down, up, down, up, yeah. down. I think there's pros and cons to both of those. Um, if we take your technique, your cycle speed is going to be slower, but you're kind of giving yourself a moment yeah. to breathe. Yeah. And also like every time you stand, we're in a supported position where the quads aren't necessarily in the load. Uh, or the legs or the spine side of the yeah. as much. Whereas if we go moving up and down, you're never giving yourself that break. So whereas Andrew's going to get through the reps faster, but the cost is going to be a higher heart rate yeah. uh, and potentially like more fatigue in the legs. So mm. I think it's just kind of one of those things you just got to play out, like, you know, figure out as you yeah. go along. Yeah, I think that's one thing I've kept in the back of my mind was just to take that half a second break at the top. Also keeping the bar like this, actually pressed it down into my esophagus quite a bit more. So breathing was quite a bit more challenging compared to a normal front rack. Oops. Uh, but uh, it's just the price you got to pay for. Same so shot. I think we're on this round of nine or 12 right I now. I think that might be nine right now, yeah. Yeah. I think so so at, at some point, what point do we start breaking here? Um, the front squats? Yeah. Um, we don't break them at all. Nice. No. <laughs> Sorry for making that assumption <laughs> that you're going to break. Um, um, they broke, um, not on purpose, um, but it was a, it was a forced break. Um, I actually think, uh, uh, correction, I think I broke in the round of 15. Yeah. Just because I got to about eight or nine, I just couldn't go anymore. I think um, just getting to a point where fatigue sets or sets in and you're like, okay, I'm, if I do two more now, I'm going to fail a rep. Um, yeah. That never actually happened until I got into my round of 15, so it was actually okay. Uh, but then, as you see, my wall walks just got super, super slow, so that's why I lost. I lost quite a bit of time, so maybe... Hey, can, I, can I ask, what, what's slowing you down on these wall walks right now? Um, Honestly, like thinking back, I try to figure it out. It's just, just overall, just fatigue. Like it's not my lungs burning. It's not really my shoulders. It's just getting up and down the wall. Just got super, super hard. Um, and then me getting back to my barbell also. Yeah. Like that. So I think something interesting here is that you know you finished that last set well ahead of Andrew, um, but just because of how long it took you to complete your wall walks, you know Andrew is now caught up yeah. a lot of time here, and that's Andrew putting in a break on his front yeah. squats and you went unbroken. So yeah. I think the takeaway message here is that, you know, like every little piece matters. Um, what What's an important point to think here when you have an ascending rep scheme like we have on the front squats here is that you kind of need to take a bit longer on the wall walks, yeah. otherwise you're just going to be getting straight back in the front squat. Yeah. So basically like throughout this entire workout, your wall walk cadence is going to be changing. It mm -hmm. can start fast, but probably as you get into deeper sets, front squat numbers are going up. You're going to need to probably slow it down just to give yourself more breaks between front squats. Yeah. Unless, of course, that front squat load is just really easy for you. Yeah. So I noticed you've now gone back to a front rack position. Yeah. Why? That was just breathing. I was struggling to breathe with my arms across the bar. I was pressing into my neck quite a bit. Um, and I just played around to see what that felt like. Because I, I actually didn't play around with the normal front rack in my warm up. I just went cross arm, cross arm, sorry. Um, so just felt it out. Didn't, make that big of a difference actually. So I think I actually kept with that the whole time through. I felt it quite difficult to brace also arms across. This felt a little bit easier to keep my midline stable. Um, so I definitely think it's a lot less forgiving when the arms cross. Like yeah. if your torso falls forward in yeah. that, then you can't really rescue it. Mm. So if you're someone who has a really upright squat, so Andrew has quite an upright squat, you might be able to get away and might feel a bit more comfortable with the crossover technique. So again, on that set, Andrew put in a break and took quite a long rest, whereas yeah. you went unbroken. Uh, you know, I don't actually know the result of this workout, so let's see what happens now. I think you've done two wall walks, so Andrew's starting his first one. Yeah, I think he actually sped up, or I think he might have actually kept the same cadence a lot better than me on the on the wall walks. Um, you can see like he's really going back in, and I'm just taking unnecessary risk going back to my yeah. bar. It certainly looks like your 
in more pain yeah. than Andrew is. And I think maybe that might be a result of just the big unbroken sets on the yeah. front squat, which can be super, you know, yeah. that's the, that's a really taxing part of the second part of this workout for most of us. Mm. So again, like Andrew's making up time here. He's just kind of behind you. Yeah. Again, I like, don't know the result of this, but I would say right now, it would look like Andrew's probably in a better position. Yeah. Uh, but also we only have 11 minutes. Yeah, we're coming into that final kind of like final part of this workout. Mm. So this might be like a case of knowing that this is going to be your last set of front squats that you yeah. just got to hang on yeah. and hold on unless you've gone back to the crossover technique here. <laughs> um, and you know, if I was Andrew here, you know, I would say like, he can't put that bar down. Yeah. You know, so you've taken a break there. That's an opening for Andrew, but looking at his body language right now, it does not look like he's, yeah. Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of screaming and shouting going on as well. So I could hear when he was like struggling, I was like, okay, he's probably going to put his bar down. So I just gave myself a bit of a couple of seconds to actually drop it as well. So Luz had a quick break. It looked like he needed to have that break. Yeah. He's picked up again. So I think you guys, there must be like a three to four rep difference between yeah. you guys right now. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> <literally> just <laughs> then, fell over. Out. Okay, so that's scores and the doors. What do we finish on? So we got, that's the round of 18 we got into. I got 14 front squats and Lou finished on 12. Awesome. So he crept up quite a bit in, those, in the last couple of rounds. So can I ask you in hindsight, what would you change if you um, change anything? I think definitely probably break up my front squats a little bit. Um, probably starting in the round of maybe 12. I think the nine wasn't that bad for me. Um, but then anything from there on was like fatigue, tend to creep in or tends to creep in at around rep nine, 10, 11, somewhere around there. And I think just holding on for that final rep and squeezing it out takes quite a big toll going back into your wall walks then. And as we said, like the wall walk only takes you about 30 seconds. So you're not gonna recover from those 30 seconds getting back to your barbell. So yeah, from round 12 onwards, maybe going six and six, or maybe like a eight to four or something like that. Um, and just trying to, because I think where I lost out of my time was on the wall walks. If I can save a bit of, save a bit of time, then I might be able to add a couple more reps in the front squat. Nice, Skulky, yeah. well done, Thank mate. You. Thank you for joining Cheers. me in the studio. Thank you. To everyone who signed up to the Summer Throwdown, good luck in week two. Uh, this is a fun one. Looking forward to seeing your scores on the leaderboard, and we will see you for the update show next week.